And now it's time for our next speaker. We are here this weekend celebrating the class of 1999. Where are our 99ers? 99, there they are. Well, something though happened in March of 1999 that really you probably remember no matter when you graduated. And if you don't, we're going to give you a little reminder of that. So please draw your attention back to the screen. Gonzaga very fortunate to keep the ball. Florida goes back into the zone. Shot clock turned off. Calvary, Hall, eight to shoot. Hall, the runner! Loose ball! It's good! With 4.4 to go! Shannon! Don't want a foul! Shannon from the corner! So we would like to, yeah, can we see it again? Well, we're going to hear a little bit more about it. Would you please help me welcome the man that's been in the driver's seat for this 99 year and even continuing to almost 21 years later. Please welcome our alumnus and athletic director, Mike Roth. Thank you very much. Am I good, Luke? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, how many from class of 79 do we have in here? Now we're talking. So just for those of you that don't remember this, uh, I was here in, as a freshman with you guys. Uh, I was a freshman. I lived in Catherine Monica, second southeast. So I was here for one year, then I left, came back in 82, 83 for another year, and then left, and I've been here since 1986. And, uh, have had the pleasure of being our athletic director here at Gonzaga for a, a long time now. And uh, we've got to see some very special things happen throughout this time, not just with men's basketball, but starting with men's basketball and just have escalated everything that we've seen from an athletic department standpoint, but also from a university standpoint. And I'm sure that if you've walked around campus, if you haven't been on campus in some years, you walk around and you see not just this beautiful building, but you see all the, the additional academic buildings, the Hemmingson Center, our student center, how great that building is, and of course our athletic facilities that we've been able to add. So it's been quite a run during this period of time. Uh, we, are, we don't have a whole lot of time, and for those of you, and we got our baseball guys up there, they've, they hear enough from me, they don't need to worry about it. I have a tendency to go long, and so, I don't really want to talk about what I want to talk about today as much as I want to make sure that you ask me questions that you want to know about and of course afterwards I'll, I'll be available. But, but please don't hesitate to throw a hand up and ask me a question as, as I move along here. Again, as, as Cara said, you know, we kicked this whole thing off in 99 when we caught lightning in the bottle, which we literally did. And if you think back to that time, Again, Dan Munson was our head coach just his second year as head coach. His assistant coach was Mark Few and, and Billy Greer. Uh, I was just my second year as athletic director. I'd been here 10 years prior as the assistant AD, but I was my, just my second year as athletic director. And we made that run, and each step along the way, we had no idea what to expect other than we had a lot of fun with it. And, uh, we, you know, we were couple baskets away from going to the Final Four, and that would have been a crazy experience for us because we had no idea what we were getting into. Since all those years now, we've been to 21 straight NCAA tournaments. There's only, right now, we're, that's Gonzaga, Duke, Michigan State, and Kansas are the only schools in the country that have been to 21 straight NCAA tournaments in men's basketball. We are now in our 11th, we just finished our 11th straight year with a first round win. Uh, the last time we lost a first round game in the NCAA tournament, we were just talking about it earlier, 79 classmate again, of uh, we were in Raleigh. And we were playing some guy that went on to play a little bit in the NBA. What was, anybody remember that one? 
Seth Curry and Davidson, that's the last time we lost a first round game. So 11 straight wins in the NCAA tournament matched only by Kansas with their 11 straight wins. Nobody else other than Gonzaga and Kansas have had 11 straight wins in the NCAA tournament. We're, right now, we're on a run of five straight Sweet 16s or better. We're the only school in the country with five straight Sweet 16s or better. That's just in men's basketball. We got the baseball guys up there. How many rings do we have up there? How, seniors, how many rings do you have? Two, right? Two, last year's seniors had three rings. We win championships in everything. Okay, that's what we do. At the same time, our student athletes do extremely well in the classroom. Marco can quote me if, he, if I bring him up here. He can tell me what these three fingers mean. We're gonna win in the classroom. Win on the field. Win on the field. And win in the community. <laughs> that's... I know the seniors up there could have quoted me too. That's what we do. And we, we don't just talk about it, we do it. We win championships in baseball, we win championships in, in women's basketball, men's basketball, women's rowing, golf, tennis. We had the number one ranked women's tennis player in the country this past year. Think about that. That's what, that's what basketball has built for us. It's, built, it's floated all, all boats from that standpoint. So again, I'll keep rambling unless you ask me a question that you want to know about. Everybody but Liz can ask me a question. <laughs> Liz, class of 99. Well, that's a great question, Liz. Thank you very much. The, the, the one thing that we have never changed, and, you know, I look at Coach Hertz sitting up here. Coach and I go all the way back to 1975. And one thing that we haven't changed, especially over these last 20-some years, 22 years, we've never changed who we are. We're, we're about the people. And that starts with the, the student-athletes, but also surrounding with our staff, our coaches, our support staff, all those people. And we're, we chase those three things, but we chase them in all the right ways. And we're never gonna compromise ourselves for that. We're never gonna be satisfied on one side. We will always strive to get better. But at the same time, we're never gonna compromise who we are. And we know that that's what makes Gonzaga different. That's why everybody wants to know you know, what the secret sauce is. I, my phone rings constantly. Just this summer, I had the, the chair of the board of trustees, the president, and the AD from Loyola Chicago flew out here to meet with me for a day to try to pick my brain on, on what we do, how we make this work. Now, for those of you that know me, think about picking my brain. That's pretty crazy, because there's not much up in there. <laughs> but... From that, it, it's a tremendous compliment to us as a university that other schools want to do what we've been doing because no one else has done this. No one else has been able to have this level of sustained success in all these sports. We have a champion that's with us here. Francesca Fairbanks is with us here, 90, class of 99. She was our first ever star cross country runner. Okay. <laughs> And her teammate Ann. Her teammate Ann was here. And, and, and again, now you look, we've, we have, we had, uh, Shelby Mills ran in the NCAA National Championship track and field in the steeplechase. Nobody would have thought of that years ago. Nobody thought we could do those things. We, the one thing that's key to Gonzaga is we believe. That's why I've stayed here all these years. That's why Coach Few stayed here all these years. That's why Coach Hurt stayed here all these years. That's why Coach Maktoff and his staff that are here with us have stayed with us all these years because we all believe in this place. Any other questions? Because I'm getting close to my time limit. Yes, sir. The, 
the craziness in the kennel part that we had last weekend? Yeah, I, I mean, again, we, we've got one of our social media people up there that he's making note of it, I can see in his head. Sure, I'm, I'm the last person to understand. You know, remember, I graduated in 79. I don't know how to turn a computer on. I don't know what social media is. But we will make sure, you know, that we'll look at that. We, of course, the craziest in kennel event. Tomorrow we're doing our fan fest with women's basketball free and open to the public and at 4 o'clock. Right, Todd? 4 o'clock? Uh, last week we did craziness in the kennel free and open to the public. There was two lines, one going south and the other going north that went forever. We found a way to squeeze everybody in there. It was lucky that the fire marshal didn't show up. But uh, we do our best to expose ourselves to the, the public as much as possible, and we love the support we get. And, and again, we've continued to have uh, you know, a tremendous amount of exposure. You think back to 79, or you think back to 89. We got group from 89 right up there, right? Yeah. Yep. And then, and then our 99s, we think back even when the 99s were here, Nobody could say Gonzaga. You couldn't buy anything that, 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 that was Gonzaga apparel, even our own bookstore. And, and nobody knew who we were in any way, shape, or form. Well, we've completely flipped that now in these last 20 years. We're not only a national brand as a university, and we're being ranked now as a national university from academic standpoint, but also now we're international with all of our international players that we get on all of our different teams, but when you bring in somebody like a Rui Hashimura in these last couple of years, the exposure that we've gotten for our university is tremendous, and we do it with really good people. Those guys up there, those baseball players up there, are really good people. They're 18 to 22 years old, qualifier. They do, okay. Think back to when you guys, this class of 79 right here, you guys were 18 to 22. They didn't have social media then, right? No cell phones, nobody was able to take pictures, but you guys did some stupid stuff, okay? These guys up there don't do as much stupid stuff, but again, they represent us extremely well. I'm out of time, but one last question. Mike Mark Soul, it's good to see you again. Uh, good to see you. Yeah, we, we changed a tremendous amount. When we go back to, it wasn't until 1986, 87, that uh, anything other than men's basketball and, and baseball were Division I. At that point, everything else was competing in NAI, the sports that we did have. But now we have men's and women's basketball, um, men's and women's soccer, men's and women's cross country and track, men's and women's tennis, men's and women's golf, uh, Baseball, of course, volleyball. Todd, am I missing anything? Rowing, thank you, sorry, Geraldine. Yeah, men's and, women row, men's and women's rowing, which we're dedicating a new boathouse tomorrow morning. So we have 18 sports now. Uh, between both the men's and women's side, we have full-time head coaches in each and every sport. We have tremendous new facilities. We compete on a national level in every sport, uh, something that we couldn't have dreamt about 25 years ago, maybe even 20 years ago. So I wish I had more time. I could tell you all kinds of stories from that 99 run. And if you, we want to visit afterwards, I'd love to do so. But Carr has got the hook, and you're all here to listen to, to Marco and Monica anyway. Uh, again, two of our great you know, alums of our university in many, many ways. So Cara, take over. Thanks, Mike. Thank you.